Okay, so let's look on some other options of 3D preview that you probably will use, and it's quite a bit useful. For this, I'm going to create new projects. I just want to clean preset from what I did. And right here, you notice we have our menu. But when I move my mouse, notice on the bottom right here, I have a lot of numbers come up. And those numbers, it show me X, Y position. And right here is our middle. Notice X is will change depending on a goal. Same is Y, which is height. And Z, it's a depth if I'm come closer or far away. As well, it's showing slope and degrees. So for example, let me go bring a little bit closer here. Oops, just a reposition. The one in nice things about this when I move my mouse, and for example, if I want to have a castle or something, I want to place it in specific object, I can go to specific area, right click, and you notice right here, I have a copy altitude, copy coordinates, and copy slope angle. So I can actually take all of these values that showing me and copy them. After when I copy, I can go inside the objects on any specific of them. For example, let's go just to select um, disk. And right here, you can see we have it positioning. I can click and paste those coordinates and place it in this area where I click. So it's kind of very useful um, application. So let's go just create a little bit bigger for this case. So instead of going and click drop, I can also take all those coordinates. How is it? and just base directly there. That has become very useful. You Again, the same thing you can do for the slope and other ones. And this is also other useful when you start working with the materials and shaders to put them. For example, if right here on some hill, I place grass and I think this is maybe too steep, the grass shouldn't go there. I can go right, copy my slope angle or preview if I want it and use it this in my um, shader distribution to remove some grass from this altitude or other one. So that is um, one option that I wish other applications have it because it's very useful and I used all the time on creating. So this is what we have it with the numbers. Right now, let's go ahead and look what we have on the top. Notice right here we have it pause. And also when we move around, the system is kind of refreshing. It's nice when you're updated, but with the charging, you have options where you can paint actual shatters with take a brush, like right here, and start painting those materials or shatters over the terrain, which is very nice. And when you do, sometimes you move around and it's not very convenient when it start rendering. Or if you have multiple windows open, and you're just interested in creating one and don't want everything refreshing, then you can press the pause button. Pause button will stop render. So now when I start moving and readjusting, it does not refresh for me, but it's give me this ability to move around and painting or do other stuff without taking this additional time to render. So it's kind of useful. Again, when you want it, you can just click and it will resume and re-render. Again, remember, it will render to the 80%, so it will give it some ability. Okay, next we have the reset. That will reset 3D preview to basic configuration. So notice right here, I move my camera. I did not update it. So when I click OK, we go back to where we started. So we reset it to this. Okay, if I move my... Um, camera. Okay, let me just reposition. And I'm going and save this to current. So right here, let's click save. Now, if I press reset, and let me just readjust maybe this way, it will reset to the last point that I saved to my current camera. So always remember when you're creating.
If you like this angle or other things, you always can in 3D preview, you always can go to the cameras and add new camera and save. So you can save the positions of your cameras and jump between them when you work with that. So 3D preview is kind of powerful tool, but again, it's kind of this one. Um, I kind of will be nice if you have options that you can toggle between. So for example, if I select camera and I can toggle camera and says after update and whatever I move the camera, it's automatically updating. That will be nice options. Maybe in some future versions, we'll add this. Um, next on the top right here, you notice we have our preview. So also all these options that we'll see on top, you can access through the pop-up context menu by right clicking. And you notice right here we have these options. Some of them will need double toggle. For example, enable atmospheres. So we enable atmospheres. We can disable them as well to preview. Same things you can access from the top menu. Shatters, atmospheres, lighting. We also have a change object display mode. And notice it's have also this teeny tiny arrow. So what is meaning when you click, you have additional options to select from. So currently, it show us bounding box. You can use it as wireframe, smooth shader, texture. The more you're going down, the more polygons it will take it, the more time to re-render it will take. So this is probably, hide will be obviously the fastest because it doesn't need to render. The bounding box, it will create so you can see the positions and you can do with far frame and other ones. It's depend where you're going. When you populate, for example, with the plants and trees, originally you maybe want to use it as bounding blocks, but in many cases I'm switched to wireframes because I want to see a kind of height of the plants when it's created. And you can hide all objects with shaders. Same things when you start painting, you can open and you can use right here if you have it already selected or create different shaders you can select them or you can create brand new if none of selected so you have a choice if you do have it and that is tool actually it's very nice because you can add and just literally paint over different shaders uh, next you have it populations currently i don't have it any populations and if you have it more than one population you can uh, one or more you can select it and force it updates or other ones. Also, you can work with these populations by moving each individual instance, deleted or adjusting. It's a very powerful tool as well. The enable disable measuring mode, it's another tool that I quite a bit used and I wish some other applications can have it. This has allowed me by selecting two points, find distance between them, angle and other information. For example, right here, if I want to place from this point up, I can click one and drag and notice how it's changed my distance, slope, altitude from one point to another. So for example, I can go down and says, okay, this is slope. Uh, so it's still going higher up or going down. So we can adjust as well. Link how many meters. Y, again, remember Y it will go up or down. Z is go depth. And next, so I can go right here, click, and now I have it my measurement. They can I can um, save, lock, or copy. Again, this is just another tool that allowed you to properly measure distance when you embed it, and you can create very accurate uh, rendering this way. So next, we have a toggle depth in preview. If you set any depth blur and other things, in this case, you can click and preview depth on a Z index way. Z I will be kind of blurring will apply it in other fear. Currently it's kind of does not work. Well, because I don't have it any blurring enable in this case. We also have it um, exposure. So in this case, we can increase, decrease our exposure for the image. If you um, want to increase lighting or other, um, this toggle it's actually very useful when, for example, I created nice scenery, but I want preview and I want to create lighting. I maybe increase till I work, set back to the normal and preview how it will look in a different lighting conditions. Okay, so right here on the bottom, we have additional options. Some of them we already know, like right here, copy. 
this view to current camera. It's one we set and we want to remember to specific camera. So we'll go to the camera, select camera, or we can create new copy position to this camera. So now it's kind of remembering that set. Next, we also have the viewpoint, which we have at current camera. Anytime, remember, anytime when I move, it will start move switch to perspective mode till I'm updating to the current camera. Okay, next top view, bottom view. Bottom view, it's almost always dark because we look from below, but it does help to select maybe some objects if something overlay. Front view, back view, left, right. And our cameras, if we have any specific like camera one presettings, if not yet copied. Okay, let's go back to our perspective view. The next, we have a reset view position. And I use it before a little bit, you saw. So when you can reset the position of 3D view to current camera render, preset. If we have some other objects selected, we can reset the view directly to this. We also can have it center focus point. So let's select this. And right here, I can select any specific focus point and I can center to this one. So next, center to object selected. So we can select any camera, for example, disk one, and just focus on the middle to this disk one position. Okay, so we can have it different. This is actually very nice when you select point of interest. Point of interest, if you look on the object, and kind of showing you this. So right here, we can select the landmark. Landmark, it does not, it's like null point. It doesn't render, doesn't do anything. But if you place it land landmark, you can navigate through this. And you can also very fast point or jump by using these landmarks inside your object selecting. So we can also center an object, snap to the object or a shader. So if we have it, any specific object, we can go directly to this and just snap to that view. Okay or snap to the origin where we started before. So X, Y position, and you notice we kind of on the middle because it's the zero will be there. So we need want to kind of maybe a little bit readjusting this one. Okay, so this is our snapping and navigation for the cameras. Next, we have it um, look at the point. So we can click if camera is selected. Okay, you also can orbit and select it about specific preset or you can enable, disable free orbit. And this is kind of weird because you can go in a different place. Sometimes it's maybe useful to do this, but most time I find um, this option I rarely use at all. So right here we preview kind of our 3D windows. The one last thing I want to check, it is a context menu. You can access by right clicking in the 3D preview window, we can access some options we already saw. It's copy your altitude, slope on all coordinates, pause preview render, reset, pause all previews. So if you have more than one window open, we can enable, disable some previews, same like right here on the top menus. We can have it also selecting objects, what we have it on the bottom, and open a new menu. So. If you don't um, want to go on the top to fast selection, you can always access all these options from the context menu by right-clicking anywhere in 3D preview windows.